Good morning and God bless you. Welcome to the Way Life Center's Sunday morning love stream with yours truly, Apostle Carrie Pope. And it's indeed an honor every Sunday and throughout the week to come with content to bless your heart and bless your soul. So listen, I've, I've heard you. I've heard you last week and the week before that. Where is Rebecca? And as I stated earlier, she was going to be off this month, had a minor surgery, so she's recovering. But I found a way to bring Rebecca to you this morning. So how am I going to do that? Well, I've comprised together videos throughout the year into an hour-long video for you today. So you can sit back and enjoy Rebecca Lynn Pope. Now, as you know, she comes raw, she comes real, but she comes to bring a word to bless you. So I want you to sit back and enjoy. I know you just got excited. Like, Rebecca's going to be here. She's going to be here. She's going to be here in just a few minutes when I give you the videos. So God bless you. Stay tuned. I'll be back shortly after she's done to close you out. So God bless you. See you soon. Oh my God, guys, I didn't know that I pushed the live button. My husband called me on my other phone. Are you serious? <laughs> I'm so sorry, guys. It was having some technical difficulties and when I came back on, it didn't seem like it was on. I said, oh, I'll come back live in a minute. But look, you guys are over here. I'm so sorry. Hey, good morning, good morning. <laughs> that is too funny. Hi, this is Rebecca Lynn Pope, and I am coming on briefly to talk about something I just posted over on Instagram. I made a post that is talking about how this current heartbreak that you're going through is intentional, that it is serving a greater good, that it's it's making a way for you. It's and and I just it. I had a consultation with someone who's going to be a new client today and in the course of the conversation <clears throat> with her I had a flashback you guys of a memory and it was back during a time when I I was literally at my lowest guys Nikki I was at my lowest Cherie I was at my lowest I everything was falling apart it had fallen apart everything had fallen apart things were horrible all hell was breaking loose in my life and I'll never forget you guys you know with tears rolling down my face it, it was like anything that could go wrong went wrong and anything that I had put my hand to met destruction nothing was working nothing was uh bearing fruit in my life nothing was and it was such a hard time it was i was broke busted and disgusted right i mean my tired was tired and and i know that there's someone who this is going to reach and it's going to relate to where you're at right now and, and I literally was just at such a low point, you guys. I didn't feel like I could really go any lower. And I'll never forget, you know, as I'm sitting there with tears rolling down my face. And I just, there was just something inside of me, you guys, that I just refused to accept this as my truth i re there was something deep down on the inside of me that just knew there was greater for me there god had greater for me i'm destined for more than this broken moment this will not be my portion this will not be who I am, this will not be my legacy, that, that God has greater calling on my life, that he's doing something. And there was just something inside of me, you guys, that broke, something clicked, something connected, something transitioned in that moment. There was just in that moment of breaking, and sometimes it feels like heartbreak. People ask me, how do you know if you've surrendered? 
How do you know if you've really given everything over to God? It feels like a breaking. It feels like you've reached the end of your rope. There's nowhere else for you to go. And it's just you and God. And you finally reach a place where you give up. And you don't just give up in order to say, oh, I, I give up on life. I give up on everything. I, you know, no, you're giving up on control. You're giving up a feeling like you've got it figured out, that you know what you're doing. This is a point in my life, you guys, where I had done everything I knew to do. I had tried everything. I, I, I had exhausted all of my resources, all of my ideas. You know when sometimes you're just trying and you're trying and you're trying and, and you're trying and you're trying and you're trying. And I just reached the end of that rope where everything I had been trying to do, it didn't work. How have my experiences shaped my view of the Holy Spirit and how has that shaped my gifts because one of the things I want to present to you this morning is that whenever you are judging judging whenever you're sitting in the judge's seat whenever you're sitting in the the seat of judgment whether it be judging others or judging yourself you are actually hindering the Spirit of God the Holy Spirit well, what does that have to do with the Holy Spirit and your gifts, Rebecca? Because one of the things I want to begin to help you to understand is that the Holy Spirit is literally your pathway into everything that you're looking for. I'm going to use the word anointing interchangeably with the Holy Spirit this morning. Anointing Holy Spirit. We're going to use it interchangeably. So the Holy Spirit is literally the pathway that is leading to everything you're desiring in life. Your Holy Spirit, that anointing on your life will open doors, that anointing is the opportunity, the doors, the pathway to abundance, to peace, to joy, to love, health, wealth, strength, right? Scripture says not by power, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, right? In other words, your might and your power are found in the Holy Spirit. Your might and your power are found in the Holy Spirit. So what does that mean? This is why my husband and I teach consistently about getting aligned, getting aligned. What do we mean by getting aligned? What are we teaching about? Med Why are we teaching about meditation? Why are we teaching about learning peace? Why are we teaching to get still? Why are we teaching and guiding you to come into alignment with God? Good morning, Deja. Why? We're teaching you to come into alignment with the Holy Spirit, which is inside of you. So this morning, and I, I, I'm not coming on to bash religion or any specific religion, but I will say this, religion has tried to separate us from God. Religion has tried to separate you from God. How has religion tried to separate you from God? Re the number one aspect of religion, whether they say they're against it or not, or they don't teach it, is judgment judgment. Stop and think about how often you are either judging other people or you're judging yourself. And think about the root of that. Think about where you learned how to be so self-condemning, self-condemnation. Think about where you learned how to talk to yourself. Think about where you learned right and wrong and the concept of sin you, didn't, you weren't born with the concept of sin. So stop and think about where you learned to constantly be judging yourself and everyone else. That's right, Anika. It's very key. Judgment is what separates us from the Holy Spirit. And religion is the number one reason that we tend to be separated from the Holy Spirit. 
wait a minute, Rebecca, you're telling me my faith is why I'm separated. I'm not telling you your faith is why you're separated from Holy Spirit. I'm telling you that what you've been taught as the system of faith is separating you from the Holy Spirit. How you've been taught to think about yourself. So just here's a concept for you guys. And I'm going to tell some stories today and we're going to have a conversation. And I really want you to just, I pray God, open your ears to hear what he's sharing today. Open your ears to hear. I want you to stop and think about how often are you bashing yourself because you feel like you're somehow not perfect or not hitting the mark. How often are you putting yourself down because you're, you're comparing yourself to this perfect example of a human being? And it, especially when the concept of sin comes in and then even the thought of something wrong is a sin. Not if you just do it, just the thought of it is a sin, right? Isn't that what you've been taught? Well, guess what? So you're walking around constantly under condemnation, constantly feeling as if you can't quite make the mark. You can't quite get it right. Right, Rose? Good morning, Tara. You're constantly feeling as if you're so, you're a wretch undone. You were born into sin and iniquity. That the root of our hearts are bad and evil and we constantly are in need of salvation in order to get it right. Right? So you're constantly feeling. So guess what? Just when you, and this is how life is for everybody, so no one's exempt from this. Just when you feel like you're getting over the hump in one area and you kind of got your ducks in a row in this area, then all hell breaks loose with something else or here comes another temptation or here comes something else to make you feel bad. That's the nature of judgment and condemnation. If you want to look at yourself and, and you want to see what's wrong with you, you're going to constantly be seeing something that's wrong with you. And if people are constantly looking for something to judge in everyone else, there's always going to be something to judge. And we have to make a choice to step out of the judge's seat and begin to release ourselves from this condemnation, these prisons that we put ourselves in. Because I've got something to tell you today that I learned in my walk with God, that I've learned through life experience. Do you know that the anointing and the Holy Spirit in your life is there whether you're right, wrong, in sin, whether you think that you deserve it or not? Let me tell you something. I have been, ooh God, I have been in places in my life where I have turned my back on God and turned my back on everything that religion taught me because I was brought up in such a strict Christian environment that was so judgmental and holy roller and so strict and so legalistic that you couldn't do, you do this and, you, and if you don't do that, you're going to be judged. And if you don't do that, you're going to be cursed. And if you don't, and so literally I grew up trying to adhere to all of these rules and laws to say, because I wanted to be blessed. I want to be healthy. I want to be wealthy. I want to be happy. I want to be a blessing to people. Our hearts are in the right place. But guess what? Then life happens and everything goes to hell in a handbasket. And even though you try to do everything they told you to do, even though you tried to be the very best person that you could be, the very best Christian that they told you to be, all hell breaks loose. Why? Because you're human and we are in the earth. It rains on the just and the unjust. So now all of a sudden there's disappointments, there's rejection, there's heartbreak, there's loss, there's lack. There's all kinds of things you start to experience as you come of age. And now all of a sudden that optimism 
and that naivete that you had about the world and thinking everything just works out great for me because I love God and I adhere to his commandments. And now even though you try to do everything that they told you to do, all hell breaks loose. You marry the wrong person. You have a baby with the wrong person. You don't believe in yourself because now if the rules that you've been taught apply, you're, you've done something wrong. Because why else would you be suffering so greatly if you had been doing everything right? And so you're searching yourself. God created me a clean heart. God heal me. God, your grace be upon me. God help me. I can't seem to get over myself. What have I done to deserve this suffering? What have I done to deserve? So you turn it inward and now you're beating yourself up. Which is why so many God-hearted, good-hearted, kind, wonderful people have such low self-esteem. Because according to the rules you've been taught, if you have done, and there's so many pastors and ministers who have taught like this. If, you're, if you were doing what you were supposed to be doing, you wouldn't be in this situation. I've heard them preach it. If you do what you're supposed to do, you're not going to be broke. If you do what you're supposed to do, and if you were so doing things and you were righteous, your marriage wouldn't have failed. If you do what you're supposed to do, your kid ain't over here acting up. Your kids will be in line and honor you. Well, honey, I'm here to tell you that's not how life works. You can do the very best that you can do. You can give people your very best. You can serve and sow and love and give and you can do everything to the very best of your ability and you can still be suffering and struggling. Doesn't always work that way. And now you have anxiety and depression and loss and lack and defeat and failure and you're just beating yourself up, beating yourself up, beating yourself up because I don't know where I went wrong. How did I get here? And I'm tired of suffering. I got there. Yeah, so many said if you don't pay your tithes, that's why your finances are messed up. Right? I got to a point in my life where I went through my second divorce. Where I had tried to do and be everything that I thought I was supposed to be as a good wife. I thought I, I did everything I thought I was supposed to do as a good woman of God. And I prayed and I fasted and I hung in there and I tried to do and be everything that I was supposed to be. And it was still failing and I was still miserable. And when I finally decided to get out, there was, I took on this attitude like, screw it. This ish don't work. If I'm sitting here trying to be, and in the meantime, you feel like you're living a life that you can't be as free as everybody else. You can't do everything you want to do because you're trying to live right and live righteous, right? And so in my mind, I'm a very logical person. I have committed my life to trying to do things this way my entire life, and I've ended up broke, busted, and disgusted. I said, screw it. I'm going to go do whatever I want to do. Sometimes you've got to color outside the lines to find God. Sometimes you've got to go beyond boundaries that man has told you are there of how you should have, would have, could have done it, what you should have done. And you've got to find God for yourself beyond all the limitations that man has tried to create for you. I still walk under a prophetic and apostolic mantle. I just do it in the marketplace and in building businesses and not up under legalistic traditional religion. What are your gifts? What is the Holy Spirit trying to do in your life? That you constantly sit back in judgment of yourself, feeling like you're not worthy. Feel, what I've learned in the world is that at my worst, I was most powerful. In our weaknesses, God made strong. Uh, there was this subject, this, this thought I was having, and it's funny because um, it was probably about four or five days ago. Carrie and I were watching a movie and 
or a show. And in this show, th there was a sequence of events where this young man his father uh, owns a large business and the father dies. And the son finds himself in a situation where it's, it's time to sink or swim. It's time to take over his father's business. He's dealing with the death of his father. He's dealing with um, responsibilities that he really doesn't feel ready for. And I literally sat there and I paused the show for a second because I was literally like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. And it reminded me of some different places in my life where I could look back and think about the times where there were really difficult situations, really, really difficult situations. And it's literally, you're going to have to make up your mind whether you're going to sink or swim. Are you going to fight or fold? Are you going to exercise your faith or are you going to collapse and give in under the pressure? And I said, I, when I paused the show, I looked at Carrie and I was like, oh my God, Carrie, you know, fight or fold fight or fold. And I thought about how many situations I've been in guys where I literally had to fight for my life. I had to make up my mind that I was not going to give in to the circumstances, the pressures, the situations. And I thought about how Terry hang in there, hang in there, honey. Listen, I thought about how I've observed over the years, guys, all the years of uh, my clients and my coaching uh, practice and people who have a tendency to fold. A lot of people have a tendency to fold. They'll have a tendency to, to draw inwards and fold in on themselves. What does folding look like? Folding is when you, you give in to sadness, you give in to depression, you give in to giving up, you give in to hopelessness, you give in to feeling like there's nothing you can do, uh, you give in to a victim mindset. This is what folding is. You give in to a scarcity mindset. And especially the times that we are in right now, this is a very just peculiar, abnormal time that we're living in right this second. And with everything that is going on, you could start to feel as if you don't have any power, you don't have any choices, you don't have, um, you know, in, there's not, there's, there's a whole lot that's going on that's out of your control. Agreed. We, I can agree with you on that. However, in every single circumstance, what is so crucial to understand and that the, and where your power, where your power lies, is always going to be in your faith and in your fight. It's always going to start here with you making up your mind that no matter what happens, no matter what happens, no matter what happens to this economy, no matter what happens to your job, no matter what happens with your money, no matter what happens with your kids in school, no matter what happens, you are going to be okay. You are going to thrive you are going to come out of this right you are going to thrive through this right you're going to make up your mind that come hell or high water you and yours you're gonna be okay the God we serve, the God that is inside of us is greater than any of these situations that we're facing and no matter what God gives you the creativity, gives you the ingenuity, gives you 
the wherewithal, the ideas for you to make money, forget about just a job. That's right, Terry, I've started a business caregiver service. Forget about, forget about it, just a job, you guys. Sometimes in these type of situations and crisis, God is pushing you out of your comfort zone. This is a wake up call for a lot of people who have been sitting on their gifts, sitting on their talents, sitting on the ideas, sitting on the business ideas, sitting on the entrepreneurial drive. God keeps pushing and pushing and pushing and you'll sit there procrastinating or you're sitting there afraid or you're just sitting there comfortable because you feel like whatever you have is so secure. You feel so secure in where you've been that you don't realize that someone else is writing those checks. Someone else, if you've got one contract and you're comfortable living on that one contract, guess what? If that one contract goes away, you're in trouble. So God has a way of shaking us up, guys. God has a way of shaking your tree, yanking your chain. And then it's going to be, what is the size of the fight in you? What is the size of the, the fight in you? It, they, like they say, it's not the size of the dog. It's the size of the fight inside of you. That's going to determine the outcome of these situations. Because at the end of the day, you've got to decide whether you're going to fight or are you going to fold? And, and it's easy to fold. Folding is easy. Giving up is easy. Feeling sorry for yourself is easy. Ca getting caught up in anxiety is easy. Relying on other people to take care of you, that's easy. Folding is easier than fighting. There's more folders than fighters. I'll say that again. There's more folders than fighters. You need to understand that in our society, you're gonna be surrounded by folders. You're not gonna be surrounded by fighters unless you intentionally surround yourself with fighters. You're gonna be surrounded by folders. And if you're not careful, you give in to a folding mindset. You give in to a giving up mindset, a passive mindset, a victim mindset. I'm not saying that circumstances don't come, guys, that are not very difficult. I'm not saying that you're not going to have to make hard decisions. I'm not saying that there's not sacrifices. I'm not saying that it's not hard. It's hard. There's been some places in my life, and this is what made me do this video today. There are some places in my life when I look back that I had the decision of whether to fight or fold. And that exact circumstance and that exact situation is what made me into the warrior that I am today. It made me. We don't understand sometimes how crucial these decisions are. Who am I talking to today? We don't understand sometimes how crucial it is that we stand in the gap, that we stay on the mark, that we stay prayed up, faithful, believing, fired up, ready to take action, ready to seize the opportunities, ready to walk through the doors that God opens for us, ready for the connections, believing, and ready to take action. Ready to take action. It's not just about passively sitting back and waiting for something to fall in your lap, waiting for somebody to rescue you, waiting for someone to do something for you that God has given you the ability to do for yourself. God has given you the ingenuity, intelligence, creativity, drive, ambition, talents, gifts, experiences. It's where the rubber meets the road is where you make up your mind that you're going to take the necessary steps to build on what God has already given you. See, some of you, God has already, the ball has been in your court for a long time. The ball has been in your court for a long time. God gave you everything you needed for the next steps. But you're too busy getting so caught up 
10 steps ahead on what you don't have Oh, well, I don't have this for a building. Oh, well, I don't have this for, for the startup cost for this. But you haven't even done what you can do. You, you're not doing what you can with what God's already given you. And you're throwing up your hands and saying, I can't do it. It's not the right time. Um, you know, it must just not be meant to be. It's not God's will for me. Honey, people have done a, a whole lot with a whole lot less than you have right this second. People have activated their dreams and began to manifest everything that they want in life with a whole lot less than what you've got right now. A whole lot less. And so while you're waiting around for the perfect conditions, perfect conditions, in the meantime, God has given you what you need to get started. God has given you what you need to go to the next level, to go to the next step. God has always made provision for whatever it is you're to do next. But that's why it's called faith. Because he hasn't given you, I don't know how to work out. He hasn't given you the next five steps. He's given you the next step. He has put in front of you exactly what you need. Terry says, you are prophetically speaking to me, right, Terry? But then anxiety comes in and fear comes in and then self-doubt comes in and insecurities come in and you're talking yourself out of doing what you can do right now. And guess what I've learned, guys? This is what I've learned. I've learned that when you do what you can with what you've got, oh, God. God will take that little bit, that little seed of faith, that little mustard seed of faith, that little bit of something that you give God, he will take it and run with it. He's like, he's like, he's waiting on anyone that has even the smallest amount of faith to put themselves out there, to take the action, to do what they're, he's calling you to do. If you will just do a, the little things, just a little bit, God comes in and just takes that ball and runs with it. And next thing you know, you've got your next thing and your next thing. This is how I became addicted to business. It's how I became addicted. It's how I became a serial entrepreneur. How I, I ended up owning multiple businesses. Because what I learned was that, is everything going to work out? No, not with everything. You're gonna fail at some, some things. Some things are not gonna work. But overall, I learned, if you will just try, if you'll just try, if you will just do whatever you can in each moment. Oprah, there's a quote by Oprah I keep on my phone. And it says, if you will do the best that you can with the current moment, it sets you up for the best in the next. If you will do the best you can and everything you can with this current moment, right now, it sets you up for success in the next moment. And that's really all God is requiring of you. Do the best you can. Do what you can with what you've got. Do what you can with what you've got. See, there's gifts inside of you. There's talent. God has got so much in you. We live in a society that wants you to be one dimensional. There's a lot of pressure that society puts on you because it wants you to have a label. And in that label, it's just one thing. Jennifer Mackey, real estate agent, right? Terry Dixon, caregiver, company owner. Paulita, right? Banking or whatever. They want you to fit these labels. But listen, sweetheart, we don't fit labels. We are multi-talented, multi-gifted. God has put so much inside of us. You're going to have to get comfortable with people not being comfortable with you. I do so many different things and you have to get comfortable with people being like, what do you do? Oh, you, do, oh, you own that too. And you do this too. And you, yes, I'm multi-gifted, multi-talented. I have a, I have a, a basic rule to how I live my life. Three words, three words, guys. 
guess what they are? Follow my bliss. Follow my bliss. Whatever makes me happy, whatever I enjoy, whatever I enjoy getting paid to do, uh, I'm going to make a check out of it. Whatever I enjoy doing, whatever brings me joy, whatever fulfills me. And guess what? If I try something and I start doing it and I don't like it, I stop. Follow your bliss. Good morning. I am coming on quickly to talk about kind of what's going on in the world right now and to remind you that coronavirus isn't the enemy. Uh, your enemies aren't your enemies. Fear is the enemy. Fear is the enemy. I, I sat back and I watched everybody posting on social media last night and I watched the news and I watched uh, President Trump's, you know, address to the country and and I just sat back and I thought, you know, it's not, good morning, Cherie. It, it's, it's not the virus you have to worry about. It's not, it is fear. It's fear, you guys. Fear is what you need to be most worried about. Taking on a mindset of fear, getting into a spirit of fear. When you, when you begin to operate from a place of fear, Carrie and I were talking yesterday and he says, baby, I want you to go to the grocery store. I want you to get about two weeks worth of groceries. Let's just, you know, be careful. And I'm like really calm, like hardly concerned at all. He's like, you're not, you don't seem to be concerned. And I said, it's because when you're, you do what you're supposed to do, you're smart, you are practical. There is no reason to get into a spirit of panic. There's no reason for you to become so fearful that you start operating from a place of fear to where you are jumping at things, overreacting to things. And if you're not careful, you know, social media and, and the media period, they, they hype these things up. They hype it up, hype it up, hype it up to where you're, next thing you know, you're gonna be so scared to do anything and then now you're, you've altered your life because of fear, not because of the virus, not because of Corona. Guys. You are just as likely to catch the flu. I'm, I'm still getting over the flu right now. I have literally got the flu like three weeks ago. We are now three and a half weeks in guys and Carrie and I are still recovering from the flu. The flu bug was horrible. I, I need you to hear me right now. It was horrible. I have never been this sick ever, ever. And I'm still recovering from this flu bug. So many people die from the flu, you guys, because it's so bad. What we just went through was so horrible. I don't wish it on anybody. So we have to be practical. We have to be reasonable. We have to be smart but we cannot be afraid. Do not buy into all this hype. Life has got to go on. Your bills keep going on. Ain't nobody about to pay your bills, right? You got to pay your bills. You got to work. You got to make money. You got to take care of your kids. You got to take care of your house. You got to take care of yourself. So do, you can't afford to get so caught up in hysteria and mania and fear. And fear is the number one enemy of in every situation. And if you think about it, guys, it's always something. This is what media does. It's always something. It's always the end of the world. It's always the end of days. It's always, it's always something, you know? And it's like, come on. At the end of the day, it has literally been the end of the world forever. It's been the end of days forever. Our parents were talking about the end of days. Our grandparents were talking about the end of days. It's not a plague. I mean, at the end of the day, guys, we have to be wise, we have to be smart, but really truthfully, more importantly, you have to stay focused. You're gonna be okay. You're gonna be okay. 
get the help, get to the doctor, get, take care of yourself, hydrate. I'm telling you, this flu that Carrie and I just came through was so horrible, guys, that it was like, it. Corona can't be no worse than this flu we just came through. That's how bad it was. I just said this to Carrie last night. I said, honey, I ain't scared of no Corona because this flu we just got was horrible. And anybody who's had the flu this year, you know what I'm talking about. It was horrible. Awesome, guys. All right, so this morning, what I'm teaching on is royalty. I'm teaching on divine identity. One of the things that I've realized in this last few weeks, and I began to talk about it individually with members and clients, and it's just come up as a theme again and again, is, and it's, it's something that's even been on my heart for most of this year. I've been posting about it, talking about it inside of my groups. And that what it is, is that children of God, God's people, believers, now what does that mean? How do we define that? Because I know you're saying, Rebecca, everybody's not royalty. Everybody can't be royalty. That would that means that there's no distinction between just normal people and people who are divine or of royal blood. So everyone can't be royalty, right? And so one of the things that I've seen again and again is that God's people, God's people, who are they? Who are God's people? It, scripture says that God judges the heart. God judges the heart which means that his people have a heart after him. God's people have more love in their heart, right? God's people are tender hearted. God's people are full of love. Guess what? You're going to see it expressed in their lives. Think, stop and think about it. I need some of you to stop and really think about this for a minute. That as you think about how you go throughout your day, the way you know you're after God's heart is guess what? You're gonna get hurt. You're going to be so severely disappointed by people. Why? Because you expect everybody to be like you. If you are somebody with a big heart, a kind heart, a giving heart, if you are a caring person, a fair person, if you are always trying to love people and believe in people, and even when people spitefully misuse you and hate on you, and you'll turn around and you're still trying to believe for God's best for those people, right? That's scripture. People spitefully misuse you, hate on you, do you wrong and you still in your heart don't want to believe that that's an evil person you don't want to believe that they could do you this way you don't want to believe that they could just be that bad that god they just they, they can't really they don't mean it it's even then you're trying to make excuses for them you're trying to explain it away you're trying to say well they've been through so much well she's been abused well he was he had an alcoholic father well you know he's just been so he's just hurting in other words god's people our hearts are so big that it's difficult for us to understand that everybody doesn't have a heart after God. The people you're making excuses for, guess what? They, they don't have a heart after God. They're not trying to be fair. They're not trying to do good by you. Stop giving people the benefit of the doubt and start literally Draw a line in the sand and you've got to understand that people are going to fall on one side or the other. And what I have found is that because God's people are so passive and so forgiving and so understanding and so willing to give another try, another try, another try, chance after chance. But see, this is where it gets really jacked up. What you don't understand is just because you don't have to hate on people, we don't have to become like them, doesn't mean that you still have to allow them access to you. Your royalty, guess what? The children of God are royalty because God judges the heart. So guess what? No matter your circumstances right this second, you are royalty. You are a royal priesthood, a chosen generation, a chosen, a peculiar people, God's special people. And guess what's missing? 
You don't understand how special you are because your heart has taken you into situations and circumstances where you have been so spitefully misused and abused and so hurt and rejected because that heart after God often will make us pray. It will make us a target. We are vulnerable to attack. We are vulnerable to the attacks of the enemy and people who want to use us. So guess what? We find ourselves in situations that if anybody were to meet you in that situation, they don't even recognize you as a child of God. They don't even recognize you for how special and chosen you are. Why? Because your circumstances don't look very godly. Your circumstances don't look like you're very special. It sure don't look like you're very royal. And guess what? The unspoken psychology of people of faith and Christianity and organized religion is that if you're going through things, you're somehow wrong. You're somehow, you don't got it. So we've got a bunch of fake Christians walking around trying to act like they're perfect when they're suffering more than anyone. And then you've got people who just can't fake it till they make it. So they're going through trials and tribulations, but then they're afraid to come to God or afraid to go to church. Why? Because they're going to be judged. So we've got this jacked up system where the very chosen, the very chosen children of God, the people of God who are literally closest to God's heart. Why? Because your heart is pure. You don't even have it in you to fake nothing, baby. You ain't even got it inside of you to pretend. You're too pure of heart. You're too real. It's not in you to fake and lie and try to act like you're something when you're not. So you avoid anything having to do with your calling or your purpose or your gifts, or you'll dip your little toe into it and back back out because you don't feel worthy. You don't feel qualified because of everything you're going through or everything you've been through because you're comparing yourselves to these fake self-righteous people who if you really knew what was going on behind the scenes in their life, you would stop judging yourself because they're way worse than you. And you're comparing yourself to a false standard when God actually is closest to you, to you, those who are downtrodden, those who are hurting. Those who, whose hearts have naively gotten them into situations that you say, you look up and you say, God, how did I get here? I know I'm better than this. I know you've called me for greater than this. I know there's a greater calling in my life, a, a bigger vision than where I'm at right now. So when you really, really to begin to catch a glimpse and an idea of who you really are. Not because we're just better than everybody. Not because we're prettier. God doesn't judge the outside. He's judging the heart. It's not because we have more money. Not because we look better, act better. No, he's judging us by our hearts. Our hearts. Your heart is what makes you royal. Your heart, your pure heart. I'm not saying we're perfect, but I need you to understand that the world is not like you. We are a peculiar people. People who love hard and give and give and give. Why? Because we expect people to be like us. Everybody's not like you, honey. Everybody's not like you. You are peculiar. You're never going to fit in, which is why you have to be around other believers. You have to be around other people who have a heart after God just like you. You can't be around just anybody. You can't be around a bunch of people who are faking it till they make it. You've got to be around people who are pure in spirit 
just like you so you can be on one accord. And it's time for us to come forth. It's time for us to step into our power. The scripture says the first shall be last and the last shall be first. It's time for us to get out of the back of the bus. It's time for us to step into authority and power and boldness. What does it mean to be a son and daughter of God, to be a son and daughter of Christ? It means that you have the same authority that Jesus had as he was walking this earth. He just knew who he was. He was aligned with God to know who he was. The problem we have is you don't think that you have the right to speak it into existence. You don't understand the power that is in your tongue. You don't understand the power that is inside of you. Just like Jesus, we, he said, this and greater will you do. Did, isn't that what the scripture says? That we should be doing greater than what we read as the stories of what Jesus did in his short time on earth. This and greater. Where's the greater, guys? Where's the greater, believers? Where's the greater, royalty? Where's the greater? It's time for you to step into position, but it starts with believing and understanding who you are in spite of your past, in spite of your circumstances. I don't care right now if all you've got in that cupboard is some top ramen. Baby, listen, your royalty. You've got to believe and begin to speak yourself out of these situations. You, where Whatever you believe, you become. The problem with God's children is they don't believe. They believe in Jesus. They believe in God but they don't believe in themselves. We don't believe in ourselves. God did not intend for you to just read stories about what other people did under the anointing of God, the Bible. What other people did under the anointing and power of God through them. No, what does God want to do through you? What is the word of God to you? You should be in relationship and alignment to where God is speaking to you. What is God saying to you? Not to John, not to Paul. What is God saying to you? What is God writing on the scriptures of your heart? What are the stories that will be written when you're long gone to say this is the word of God according to Andrea and the story of her life and what God did through her to bring people closer to God and into relationship? What is your story? What's the book of Michelle going to say? What is the book of Sarah going to say? What's the book of Rebecca going to say? You are royalty. <clears throat> royalty. The only thing that's missing is your understanding and knowledge of who you are. Self-doubt. Self-doubt, putting ourselves down because of what we've been through or situations we've been in is killing your ability to move forward in the power of who God has truly called you to be, of who you really are. Because whatever you speak, However a man thinketh, so, so is he. Whatever you're holding in your mind, whatever you're holding in your heart 
is who you are. So if you begin to change the narrative, you begin to change your life. If you begin to change the self-talk, the words you speak over your life, if you begin to speak, God, I'm your chosen. I am anointed to do the work you've called me to do. I am chosen to walk this earth, to do and be what you've called me to be. God, help my mind, help my unbelief. I know who I am. I know you've chosen me for such a time as this. God, I know that I'm powerful and gifted, that you've anointed me. Anoint my mouth, anoint my hands. God, bring forth in me your power. Show me strong that I reach the masses, that I reach those souls that are assigned to me, that I stay on assignment to do what you've called me to do, to fulfill your will and destiny for my life in these years that I have, that I accomplish what you've called me to do. God, help my unbelief. My son said to me one day, he said, Mom, he says, you're almost kind of arrogant. Mom, you're kind of, you're almost, you're almost arrogant, Mom. And I said, baby, that's not arrogance. It's confidence. When you've been through hell, and you understand that you're a survivor and that you are a warrior because see the flip side of the suffering coin is honey you know how to take a licking and keep on ticking the flip side of the coin that you haven't turned over yet because you've you've been living and dwelling in such a victimized state of everything that's gone wrong the flip side of the coin honey is power Strength, everything you've been through has made you a warrior, but you just haven't been taught to tap in to the warrior side of who you are because you're so used to being aligned with the hurting, the broken, the going through, the suffering, the pain, the agony, Things not going right in your life. Broken relationships, abusive parents, molestation. You're so used to aligning yourself with a narrative that is so the flip side of the coin. Guess what? People who ain't been through nothing don't know how to survive a storm. They don't have inner strength. You ever been around somebody who ain't been through nothing? They love to judge people. They look at somebody like, oh, I don't understand why she's acting like this. I don't understand why they're going, why she's doing that. I, I, I just can't even imagine. No, you can't because you haven't been through anything. I learned a long time ago. I began to realize, God, why have I been through so much? I would meet people, especially in your jobs. You listen to people and it's like, that is it? It's really not just my imagination. I have been through more than most people. Now, wasn't that great? I know it. I felt you. I read your comments. Listen, I love that woman right there. She has blessed us today, and I'm excited that I was able to bring her to you in that manner. So let's just pray real quickly before I raise an offering. Father God, we glorify you. We thank you for this morning. We thank you for the message or the messages that Rebecca brought this morning. Powerful content, word that really spoke into the essence of who we are and who you are. Father, bless this morning as she continues to heal. Bless those who have heard this word this morning to receive it and to apply it into their lives. God, we glorify you. We thank you this morning. This we pray in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Well, listen, God bless you. This morning, we want to now raise an offering. This is where we have what we call partnering. 
And when you partner with us here at The Way Life Center, what you're doing is helping us take this ministry and this vision further. You know, whether it's the background that you see, whether it's the content of the video or the quality or the sound. Here at The Way Life Center, we believe in A1 quality and bringing that to you. And so as we now put up on the screen the links where you can join us, please go over there on the PayPal and the links also in the content in the bottom right here in the comment section. Or you can go to Cash App at the dollar sign, The Way Life Center. Either way, it's going to be PayPal or it can be Cash App. But whatever you can do this one to be a blessing, please do that. Help us further this ministry. If we've been a blessing to you, come on in return and be a blessing to us and partner with us here at The Way Life Center. So we're going to give you a few moments. Again, up on the screen right now is where you can go and make your offering this morning, whether it's via PayPal or Cash App, which is the dollar sign, The Way Life Center. Anything that you're able to, process, uh, to bless us with is something that will help us process this ministry into the next level. All right. So God bless you for that. Listen, we want to hear from you. Please write us, inbox us. Let us know how today has blessed you. Rebecca cannot wait to get back to you live. But in the meantime, we pray that this video today was enough to help you hold on a little longer till she can come back, all right? So listen, God bless you. Continue to pray for our nation. Continue to pray for those in, within your family. We pray for those who are struggling with COVID. So many are still struggling with that right now. And I send out prayer upon their families and their lives and speak healing upon them at this moment, all right? So God bless you. Until next Sunday, we speak over your life peace, we speak blessings, and we speak abundance. And I want you to go in peace, all right? So God bless you on behalf of myself and Rebecca. We love you. We thank God for you. And we'll see you soon, all right? God bless you. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.